Now let us understand the working of GPS receiver when you carry it in a car. For example, we travel in this car. We assume that we have a GPS receiver here and uh, the satellites shown over here are imaginary and for better understanding they have, brought, they have been brought down and to spot the exact location of this vehicle it, the GPS receiver continuously interacts with the three satellites, a minimum of three satellites and let us understand the three-dimensional trilateration principle what I explained earlier. Now with respect to the first satellite let us imagine the GPS receiver is at a distance say x miles from from the satellite 1. Now we have to draw a sphere of radius x miles from the with satellite number 1 at the center. So we get a sphere like this and let us consider satellite number 2 being at center and the distance of the GPS receiver from this satellite say y miles and as y miles as radius and satellite number 2 as center we have to draw a sphere again and the third satellite the satellite number 3 says z miles away from the GPS receiver and we have to draw a sphere of radius z miles around the satellite number 3 so the point of intersection of all the three spheres will get two points of intersection but one will be at space and other is on the surface of the earth that is the point at which we have the GPS receiver so it easily plots the exact position wherever we are on earth so this is a real-time differential GPS and uh, the term differential GPS is being adopted so that it's more accurate. So the normal GPS has some errors. Say for example you have a big skyscraper so that it says at the Empire State Building. So the transfer of electromagnetic waves to the satellite and the ground receiver station may slightly get disturbed or delayed. So that uh, sometimes you get as errors on your GPS receiver. So, to avoid that, the differential GPS has been adopted. So, let us see in short how does it work. We have a ground station or a GPS and radio beacon reference receiver. It's been called as a reference receiver because the, its position on the earth is fixed. The position is fixed on the surface of the earth and this position is being computed as electronic data on each and every satellites and say I'm carrying the GPS receiver in my hand I'm roving all over the globe and my location is being computed in such a way as I explain now the ground station communicates with my receiver and calculates how far I am with the ground station and this distance is being transferred to the satellite and my receiver communicates with each and every satellite which is visible on the sky and how far I am from the satellite is being transferred again to the satellite so on comparing the distance from the receiver to satellite and the distance from the receiver to the ground station both the signals has been transferred already to the satellites which is being located over here and this distance is used to spot exactly where I am located with the GPS receiver on the surface of the earth. And this is the real-time GPS mechanism. First, the first point is we have a GPS ground control and the second is the GPS group satellites that is GPS satellites and third is the GPS receiver what we have with us. Say for example when we travel with the GPS receiver from New York to Pittsburgh in a car the distance from the GPS receiver and GPS ground control that is fixed on earth it's going to vary and the, this varying distance is fed to the satellite and the GPS receiver transmits its uh, data that is the distance between each satellite and itself 
as other data. Combining these data in the satellite, it produces the precision location on Earth, that is, the exact location where the GPS receiver is. Also, it can calculate the speed of uh, speed at which we travel in the car, the direction, and what path we took from traveling to New York to Pittsburgh. 